Good evening, friends, and welcome to Soul Box. My name is Susanna Red, and this is my blog. So, tonight, we're going to delve into some very deep spiritual, metaphysical subjects. First up, the sacred scarab. So, we have three different representations of scarabs here on the camera for you to see. And we <clears throat> have the first one, which would be this guy here. And we picked him up at Barnes and Noble with a book. This is a manufactured plastic type scarab. Now over here we have a very interesting subject. And this comes from Joe's mom. Now the story goes that long ago she had a friend that had traveled to Africa and brought this back for her. And for some reason she kept it over the years. And she gifted it to Joe. I guess that was back probably about a year after our scarab appeared. And you can see it does have markings, hieroglyphs of a sort. Surely not what we see in the Egyptian mysteries. So I'm going to set that down. Okay. Last but not least, we have the topic of conversation this evening, which is the scarab that manifested in 2007. And so that's the story I'd like to share. Give you a really quick, short version because this video, I want it to stay concise and we can delve deeper as interest progresses. I had worked with a metaphysician whose name was Dr. Dunn, and he gave me some incense and directions on how to meditate with them, making especially sure that no other human was in the place I chose to meditate because when the incense did its thing, I mean, how else do I really say it, right? Um, that if anyone else was in the building, that their energies that traveled with them would come in direct contact with the energies that traveled with me. So I was to be completely alone. And I'm going to show you real quick the portal that I opened up when I fell in love with Joe. And there's his picture. So, at this time, this had been a laundry room at the hair shop. And you see, as the love was arising in me, I had to create art. And what it was, was actually my interpretation of Dr. Bach's little house in the country in England. And so you see, here we have a big tree, and I did the ceiling and all that. This is the door out of the place. So you can imagine what a trip it was to hang out in this room. So, I was in the room meditating, had the lights off, wasn't afraid, had a peaceful meditation, felt wind, heard sounds, came out of the meditation. Now, what Dr. Dunn had given me to burn the incense was a charcoal bri briquet, one that would be like what we would imagine in church. And so the charcoal briquet had sat here on the incense burner. So you can imagine it was completely flat down on the surface. When I came out of the meditation, I was surprised to find that the charcoal briquet had burnt the incense burner itself. And, of course, at that time, the scarab was not there. Now, this is where most people trip out and say, you got to be kidding. This is a real story, but absolutely, yes, it is. 
And so now we'll see in this picture here that at the time of manifestation, the burn circle was surely much more apparent and much more dark. And for example, we see an area on the picture here that was severely charred, whereas up here on the actual burner now, in two, well, we're almost in 2016, right? You can see one small remnant of that burn. So we're looking at a difference in size that we can clearly denote. Why is the circle dark there, we ask now? Well, these are all the mysteries that we will unravel when the time is appropriate. So, I had done this meditation before moving to Ferguson in 2007. It was the end of August, actually. When I moved to Ferguson and we lived in a building where no other people were up in the apartments yet, I mean, surely I wanted to clear energy and burn incense and, you know, bless the area and all that good stuff. So, we got into November. And one day, I walked by the incense burner and noticed the scarab. Now, a lot of people would say, come on, here again, that can't be a scarab. But by looking closely at the feet, we notice that it is so surely not a ladybug. So I'm going to let that focus in. And you can see this amazing manifestation even has the small oh I would call them feeders on the front of the mouth Let's see if I can turn that for you and the legs the length of them and the way they move about that is definitely not a ladybug I'm going to turn it around so you can see the back side Okay, let the camera come into focus. What's amazing about this is when it first formed, we can see where old holes have actually, uh, I would say, closed up and others have opened. The beautiful thing is that it's retained its symmetry through this transformation. I have to explain to people that the changes happens so slow, it's surely not like we could observe them as the change was happening. I've always imagined that as it opens up the wings, actually, that's when very large revelations will come. So I'm going to set this back down now, and I'd like to read what wise ones know about scarabs. This comes out of The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. It is the reader's edition. And we see it going back to this little guy right here. Surely does represent the illustration. Oops, sorry. The illustration on the book I'm backwards to all of this. Let me put that right down there. There we go. So you can see how closely this resembles that. And of course, we do have hieroglyphs on the back side, as illustrated in the book. All right. So, reading from the insects section, page 267. The Egyptian scarab is one of the most remarkable symbolic figures ever conceived by the mind of man. It was evolved by the erudition of the priestcraft from a simple insect which, because of its peculiar habits and appearance, properly symbolized the strength of the body, the resurrection of the soul, and the eternal and incomprehensible creator in his aspect is Lord of the Sun. E.A. Wallace Budgie said, in effect, 
of the worship of the scarab by the Egyptians. We're going to skip over that paragraph. We don't have enough time. You're welcome to research this. Initiates, we're going down here. Initiates of the Egyptian mysteries were sometimes called scarabs. Again, lions and panthers. The scarab was the emissary of the sun, symbolizing light, truth, and regeneration. On this page, we want to focus on this short paragraph. Because of its relationship to the sun, the scarab symbolized the divine part of man's nature. The fact that it is beautiful, wings were concealed under its glossy shell typified the winged soul of man hidden within its early earthly sheath. Okay, so that gives you a little background on our mystery. I would like to go ahead and douse for you guys. I believe that I am completely calm enough. And remember when you douse, up to 30% of it can be your mind working on it. So before we douse, we always want to clear out that side of us that would input without, oh, let's say, a serious, um, we want to be open-minded. We never want to be prejudiced, I guess is a way to put it. So I'm going to place our first guy up here. And of course, I've already asked permission to douse. And when you douse, there's different, you know, things that, oh, the experts will say. For example, if the swing comes towards you, it would be one answer versus away from you, which would be another. So, theoretically, towards you is no, away from you is yes. If we spin clockwise, that's yes. If we're counterclockwise, it's a little different answer. So I just want to show you that this scarab holds no energy of its own. So I have my hand balanced and I'm going to let this go and ask for permission to douse. We should see that we have a pretty non-movement. Of course I'm nervous because I'm doing this for you guys. So now I'm going to ask a question. Does this scarab hold its own energy? Thank you. You can see there was very little movement there. Now, let's say, what is this girl doing? Now I'm going to have to show you something else, okay? If I put my hand out right here with this over my hand, and I steady myself and I say a false statement. So let's clear this. Question Is my name Joe Smith? Very little movement towards me. Now, thank you. We're going to ask another question. Is my name Susanna Pratt? Now we see the motion in the ocean, don't we, guys? We have a clockwise spinning of the pendulum at this point. Thank you for the answer. Clear. Amazing how they had to bring that to a slow. You see that? Okay, we're going to stop. Now, I'm going to bring this one down and bring this up. Of course, this is the ancient scarab out of Africa. We're going to get our clear. Let me get balanced. Okay. Does this scarab hold and manifest energy.
very still. Here again, answer no. Thank you. All right. Let's show them, baby. Get my pendulum right here. And hit clear. Now I ask the question. Does this, em this scarab emanate a field of energy? There we go. Thank you. So, the question is, what do we make of this? Is this something we should fear? And of course, that answer is no, guys. We live in such miraculous times. Next question would be this. What does this signify for mankind? Well, what it signifies is that we are under a transformational process. And although we don't know what the future holds, say, in this physical plane, we do understand now that as sovereign beings, we choose where to go. We do not consent to recycling tactics anymore. And so to me, this scarab is a confirmation of spirit of the phenomena that has been going on that I have witnessed firsthand, <laughs> incredibly, through this electronic internet since September 1st, 2014. So with that, peace, love, and light, guys. Look for and expect miracles. They are all around you. Take care. Suze, unplugging from the third cosmic ray. Good night.